This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. I'm gonna shake your five. Wake your fuck ass up. That cross touch. Sway the morning, shave four five. Yo, Heather, I, I take great pride in this next guest. Tell him why, Sway. I've known this man since the 90s. Right. You know, and I remember in the early 90s when it was this fashion boom that took place um, that that um, just seemed to take the fashion world by storm. A lot of reasons why. I don't know because I, at that time I wasn't, you know, that instrumental in it or I didn't study it, but it, it just seemed like anything else when it comes to hip-hop influenced um, genres that a lot of times these things are spawned out of necessity and out of a lack of access. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the culture came around because there wasn't enough representation of us and mainstream platforms and what we did, our talents and gifts uh, weren't being recognized, so we created our own culture. It That's all right. kind of galvanized together and became this thing called hip-hop. Mm -hmm. Fashion industry is really hard to break. We heard uh, Kanye came on, came on the show years ago being who he is with his brand, with the money he's made, and still had a lot of gripes and complaints about not being able to get to the table, the table of food, not doors not being open. Mm -hmm. Those things have been happening long before it happened to him, you know. And I remember when King Tech and I came on the airways in the early '90s, and um, there was a uh, a lot of things that were starting to develop. And I remember when fashion lines that were just kind of urban hip hop fashion lines, they called it urban, but you yeah. know, start coming out of the woodworks, whether it was cross colors. Um, further down the line of Nietzsche, Mecca, and all these, you know, different lines that were happening. But Maurice Malone, mm. out of Detroit, came and revolutionized how we wore denim and how denim was being presented to the world. And, yeah. and, um, and he did it his own way. The other thing about him is um, he's the founder of the Hip Hop Shop. Now, when you talk about the hip hop shop, I think it, when did that open? About 93? 93, 1993. 1993. This is the clothing store that Proof, the late great Proof, would host these MC battles and mm -hmm. competitions that would take place on the weekend. And a lot of the greats that came out of Detroit right. would make their appearance there. That's where you went to kind of establish yourself in the game. If you can make it through the hip hop shop, you can make it anywhere. From the hip hop shop to Maurice Malone. Ten years later, I'm still in the zone. That's bizarre right there. And that's oh, what he I was telling. You never heard that, Mo. <laughs> <laughs> where you was at, Mo? Okay, where was you at? And a great artist, so if you look on that wall who's pointing at us right now, that Drake just said is the greatest to ever grab the MF mic, uh, came through the hip hop shop. Uh, we know him as Eminem. And if it wasn't for these, how we do get in the game, these platforms, whether it's a hip hop shop, um, what is it called, St. James, the um, uh, the club that's out there, um, St. Andrews, St. Andrews, you know, mm -hmm. those platforms weren't around. These people may not be here today. And I want to welcome him to the show. One of the most uh, successful people that ever came through the oh, fashion industry, Maurice Malone, ladies and gentlemen. Mo, man, I want you to tell your story a little bit because I think you lived the true hip hop story. You know, my, you know, you may not think of it like that. I don't know, but you started in your mother's basement, basement yeah. washing clothes in her wash machine, right? Yeah, I used to uh, wash the fingertips off my fingers. <laughs> you know, with uh, these little uh, stones that you need for stone washing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was doing them in a stone tub, and then. Stone wash, putting stones in my mother's um, washing machine. Yeah. And when she get home from work, would scream at me, you tearing up my machine. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you were trying to make stone wash jeans? Yeah, uh, I was actually doing overalls because I couldn't figure out the zipper. Uh -huh. So uh, overalls, either you can just pull, o pull them over and... Uh, that's how my, my, I got big in overall game. Mm -hmm. I, I did uh, like a basic overall like you can think of now with, with, with like a tank top kind of top. Mm -hmm. Then later I did the chain link overalls. I did overalls with backpacks. So. And that's how it all started in your mother's basement in her washing machine. Right. What, now, what was FUBU in all of this at that time? A uh, couple years later. A couple years right. later. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think I, when I started... There were no uh, the black designers I used to look at, up at uh, were Patrick Kelly, mm -hmm. uh, Willie Ware, uh, wow. then uh, Willie also, Ware. Yeah, wow. people forget Willie uh, Ware. 
Wow. Willie Smith. What's Smith? Willie Smith. Willie yeah. Smith. Right. Wow. Willie, where? And That's like my the... dream was to like hang in the store. And actually, I I, I did fulfill that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I started shipping department stores around nineteen, I think uh, 80, 89. Eighty nine. Sometime between eighty seven, eighty nine, I was sitting right next to uh, Ralph Lauren Polo and Willie Ware. And Willie Ware. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, um, w- w- would you get? Who would you give? credit to really starting the, the black designer boom in the fashion world at that time? Well, it's because, you know, I, I was doing like high-end stuff way mm-hmm. before uh, before uh, hip-hop fashion. Yeah. And it was because I kept bumping my head against the door. When you, when you had Kanye on, yeah. I, I was listening to that show. Yeah. And I, was, I wanted to pick up the phone. I go, I understand. I know what you're talking yeah, about. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> and, um, I kept bumping my head, you know, trying to get into high end stores. We got, I look just like I look today pair uh-huh. of jeans, t shirts, baseball cap. And um, uh, it wasn't until I started selling uh, mom and pop stores in the neighborhood I, I, with the jeans I made, uh, took them around to a couple of different stores, and it was a lot easier road. Mm-hmm. And that's how I kind of blew up in uh, the hip hop world or. or and the uh, urban fashion where we actually made a whole new market. Mm-hmm. Uh, and part of the thing with the jeans that I made for the inner city, at the time, you know, kids were wearing jeans several sizes too big. Yeah. And uh, constantly pulling them, pulling them up and stuff. So I made these, so I made my jeans a little baggier. Then I called them blue jeans for your ass. Mm-hmm. So that's why, they, that's where the slogan comes from blue jeans for your ass all right now how did you start getting how did you go from your mother's basement to doing consignment deals at local stores to being manufactured overseas hmm how long is your show (laughs) 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 Uh, it's been like it's almost 30 years now i think Uh, yeah yeah um i started uh I was like the the the, the kid with the uh, with the house with the Kool Aid. Yeah. You know, all, all all the guys come over. Should we shoot pool? Uh, the stuff that I made for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, my friends would ask, you know, where you get that hat from? Oh, I just made it. Uh, make me one. Mm-hmm. Then make them make them a hat. Uh, they go wherever they go, and other people ask them, and people would just start coming over to my basement, placing orders. Mm-hmm. And it got to a point where. Like I was like eighteen, nineteen. And I'm thinking, hmm, this, I can make more. I can make about the same amount of money as I can if I was working at Burger King. So I'm gonna keep doing this, mm-hmm. you know. <laughs> and it just kind of snowballed. It snowballed. I met uh, Ernest Pratt uh, during the the course of always trying to find fi- financing. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was like a shoe salesman in Detroit, and uh, he went to a party one day and. Uh, he noticed like everybody was wearing either Carl Kanai or Maurice Malone T-shirt. Mm, Carl Kanai, that's another one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and mm. um, so he like sought me out, uh, introduced me to a, to a to a guy he was working for for financing. Uh, that didn't work out like with me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm I've always been about being in control of of what I do. Uh, I, I still own my brand. Always own my brand. Uh, uh, part of the thing with why a lot of companies and designers go in and out of business because they lose control when they get financing. Mm-hmm. They give up control for the money, and once you know you 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 give up control, if things aren't going right, the money is always gonna the, drive the the wheels where you're going, and mm-hmm. a lot of times they drive you out of business. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. um, Simon Akiva, who is that? Uh, Simon was, uh, he owned Simon Sales. We had a license agreement. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was doing Mo Jeans. Uh, he taught me a lot. He taught me, like, manufacturing. Uh, that's, uh, if, that's Richie, Richie Akiva's uncle. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. If you know, uh, probably the best club in New York City. Um, 
one oak. One oak. You go out all the time, you know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Hey, man, I'll take that. I go out all the time. Yeah. I'm there all the time, man. One oak. That's, that's Richie's. Uh, that's Richie's uncle, uh-huh. uh, and he taught me a lot in the game. He 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 uh, took me to China the first time I went overseas, uh, uh, and he would explain everything. You know, we do this because it is. You do this because it is, and whatever. And uh, basically, that's where I learned production from. So, but he he taught he taught you uh, distribution, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, marketing, all of that. No, not, not marketing. not marketing. I taught him marketing. Okay, you taught him marketing. Actually, you can't can't teach him marketing. He didn't. He he was the reason why a lot of celebrities didn't have our clothes. In, okay, on their music video because we went. He didn't. Know. He, he, <laughs> yeah, he, 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 he didn't want to. <laughs> we would, we would get people that would call. <laughs> yeah, and say I want to I want to wear this song. We we're, we're shooting in Miami, so and so. We 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 send a, a order to the warehouse for FedEx it to to down to Miami. He see every order to come through. Mm, don't uh, ship that ground. Don't we're not spending oh, FedEx. Oh, he was he was a penny pincher. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> yeah, okay. And then we were asked like, what happened? You didn't wear the clothes in the video. They would say, uh, yeah, they came in a day late, but I'm wearing them now. <laughs> yeah, and that, that defeats yeah. the purpose. purpose yeah. uh, man, this is interesting. Maurice Malone is here. We, and we're talking about the fashion industry and, and the hip hop fashion industry. Uh, we wanna you wanna ask some questions? Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Sway in the morning. Raise Maurice Malone is here, founder of Mo Jeans. Maurice Raise Malone brand, Raise also the Williamsburg Garment Company, WGC. Yeah. His, his new venture. Mm-hmm. Um, he was there before Cross Colors. Yeah. Um, you know, it came uh, with, from Willie Ware, Carl Kanai, some of the brands that helped inspired him. The creator of the hip hop shop, uh, which, you know, is now legendary when it comes to uh, hip hop in Detroit. Um, th- real quick, the hip hop shop. It's not open for everybody that is. Uh, people have tried to use the name at least four or five times since I left Detroit and tried to open stores called the Hip Hop Shop this or the Hip Hop Shop that. But the original Hip Hop Shop is only online. It's only online. Mm-hmm. So hiphopshop.com. Right. Okay. Who used to come through that shop when Proof was hosting these MC sessions? Who Who are some of the names that would come by? Everybody that came to the city that was doing some promotion had to come by. Um, some of them are our, our most famous uh incidents or people that came by the shop uh Wu Tang uh when they first started they gave we gave a free concert mm-hmm. you know they didn't charge anything <laughs> <Yeah>. um <clears throat> there's a famous battle where proof battled uh uh Chris Webber mm-hmm. uh Chris and Jalen and uh Fab Five used to come through all the time uh but after Proof battle, Chris. Uh, he didn't come anymore. He got upset. He didn't get <laughs> <laughs> Did he really get mad? He, like Chris yeah, Webber got mad? Yeah, he gave him that timeout, that, that timeout uh, uh, phrase, uh, or hit him with that at the yeah. end of the of the battle, and oh, made everybody laugh at him. So. He made the wrong timeout call. <laughs> remember? remember that? Yeah. What about M? Uh, of course, Eminem was there all the time. Uh, what, what was he like when he first walked in? Like in the early days? Quiet. Um, Actually, uh, he was like him and Proof had this thing where like they never battled. They never like if 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 Proof was going to get in a battle, then M would stay out. If M was going to battle, then Proof stayed out. So uh, they they never went against each other. They always supported each other. Was there any hungry MCs back then? Because M developed as a rapper. You know, Every, everybody yeah. was hungry. Yeah. I always thought like if this. Well, but was I was going to say any hungry MCs. That could eat up M back then. Actually, I thought Proof was the best uh, okay. for a long time. Even when uh, M came out with a record, uh, I remember I was playing basketball with the guys at the Source, and uh, uh, they asked me about Eminem. Uh, you ever heard this guy Eminem? Um, I said, uh, I said, yeah, he's real good. Uh, but Proof, he's he's the the top guy in Detroit. And uh, later, after M came out, I heard his album. And I was in the studio with, with Proof a lot. Uh, he, I sounded to my record label at the time. And I told Proof, I said, you know, 
<laughs> I thought, you know, you was the, you, you know, I'm still going to say you, you the best freestyler. I mm-hmm. said, but M know how to write, and that's where you have to go. That's what you have to learn. Wow, mm-hmm. man. Rest in peace to proof, man. That dude, Absolutely. that dude was uh, uh, definitely dope. Um, Mo, the fashion industry, obviously a big booming business, and business always comes with competitors. So was there any a time where someone was trying to run up with scissors and just sabotage your business? No. No, I can't remember. I've always had a lot of support in this business, um, uh, except for the press. Uh, <laughs> not getting enough press. <laughs> but n- n- I can never, I-, I can't remember any time anybody's trying to sabotage anything. Now, who was Paul Bunyan? Wasn't there a rapper named Paul Bunyan in Detroit? <laughs> uh, you're talking about Eminem's uh, partner and attorney, uh, Paul Rosenberg. Yeah. yeah. He was one of our first rappers when we we did this thing called the Rhythm Kitchen. Uh, Paul was a rapper, yeah. What now? What, what would you rank his rate his skills at that time <laughs> on a scale one through ten? I, I can't even remember. You can't remember. <laughs> Damn! Good thing for law. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what up, Paul? We got Javon on the line right now hey, from Javon. Connecticut. Say what's up to Maurice Malone, Javon. Hey, what's up, Maurice? What's up? Nah, I got a question for you. Um, I want to know, like, how did you go about getting? The stuff inside the stores coming from, you know, where we come from, mm-hmm. um, whatever, like, meaning, like, like, did you have to distribute your stuff, like, your own way? Like, did you have to pay for your own stuff and set up, like, the displays inside the stores, like, the way you want it to be? Um, when you get big, you can start talking about um, how you want things to, to display and pay for your own displays or... or, or or set up a shop inside of a shop. Um, but when you're just getting going and, and you're trying to sell the stores, um, you're going to have a better rate of success walking into the store, asking for the buyer, and talking to that person. Uh, that's where, like, with, with me, with mom and, sh- pop, mom and pop shops, had a, you know, that's how, that's how we grew. Uh, now, you can't, you can't go into, a, like, a big chain and ask, you know, for the buyer because he's not going to be there. So don't, yeah. do, don't do that. <laughs> so someone like to start now to try to get into the corporate stores, is it is it pretty much impossible unless you establish a brand, establish a buzz for yourself? or Yeah, even like my brand and, and even like me with a name, I have more success not calling big stores and just waiting for them to call me, waiting for them to hear about uh, here through just the media or through word of mouth, whatever that the 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 the, the brand is something that they have to look at. You do trade shows also. Mm-hmm. Um, all those old, all those, those are dying. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, when you why are they dying though? They used to be the the bomb. Like you go to the trade mm-hmm. show, all the artists are there. Brick and mortar for- is brick and mortar is uh, is not what it used to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's people are all about getting the most for their money now yeah and at the time like people would travel to like las vegas for these big trade shows and it'd be you know every company had a booth there the magic uh, show I thought right it was, but, yeah. magic show now it's like liberty show uh uh it's lots of different shows depending on what genre of fashion you're in but for denim for me it, it was the liberty show uh also there's another one called project show you would the buyers will all come to to these events and walk around and have a, like three or four days to 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 look at different things and go into your booth and place orders. But now it's like you know we have the internet. Yeah, uh, you can get high quality pictures f- from the internet, so you don't even have to to leave your store. You know, mm-hmm. uh, you don't have to spend that money for that traveling unless you just want a party because that's what trade shows that come down to just being a big party yeah a lot of fucking <laughs> and people right. just saying Hi, no, i'm sorry whatever. a lot of sex my bad, Mo. My bad. <laughs> a lot of sex Mo, how important do you think it is though for these designers because as sway mentioned earlier we've seen a lot of come and a lot of go basically you know how to sew you know how to stone wash you know how to do these things how important do you think it is for someone who wants to start their own clothing line to actually learn how to design and cut and sew how important do you think that is well uh, um, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but I always 
depending on the genre that you're in, of course. Uh, if you're doing like high fashion stuff, that's that's the most important thing. You gotta you gotta uh, make your clothes. If you're doing really technical design stuff, then you should know uh, things about you know how to make a garment. Mm -hmm. And but if you're doing sportswear, you're doing like streetwear stuff like that. I always tell people start with just t-shirts. That's the simplest thing. Uh, you can produce like a half a dozen shirts affordably and still and and sell them at a rate that you can make a profit and you can build your company you can build your name like that you can learn the business as you go without getting far into debt so yeah. i always tell people start with a couple t-shirts mm -hmm. start walking around the stores taking them you will see if what you have is something that you that if you actually have something you know mm -hmm. To uh, going back to what Kanye was saying, how difficult was it for you guys in the early '90s to really break and, and kind of break those ceilings in the fashion industry? Because I'm sure it was a lot of resistance. A lot of stores probably didn't want to put these some of the um, the the hip hop fashion lines into their stores. Like, how difficult? What yeah, what is the forces the that's working against the growth? Um, they fought like. Department stores fought it for a long time. I never really broke big into the department stores. I was probably uh, the number one or two selling uh, brand in almost every city, uh, easily one, two, or three. Uh, but we had this reputation, I think, of shipping late mm -hmm. uh, that department stores that's what I, I I don't know. I can only assume that's why they never uh, went with us. I, I actually, I remember uh, at a um, at this uh, trade fair or this, it was this uh, meeting that uh, uh, WWD used to hold, Macy, the, the president of Macy's was speaking. Mm -hmm. And I stood up and asked, like, how do someone like me get into Macy's? And it's like the whole crowd was like, Every because everybody was scared, like yeah. And people come up to me after, after, after that, and be like, "I wish I had the balls to ask them that." <laughs> really, that was that. It was that intimidating? In yeah. There. And you know what? We never got any. Never got amazing. <laughs> they, they they gave us the the runaround. Yeah. Oh, so so you you call him. You make sure you get in touch with him. So so and 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 they played the game for a while. When I called, you know. Uh, talk to the VP. She was like, "Yeah, we're gonna do them send the buyers over and something." But you know, nothing, nothing that really never happened. happened. At your height, how much were you guys generating a year? Hmm. Maurice Malone. We were Brand. selling forty million, but uh, we were shipping about nineteen twenty million. Mm -hmm. uh, that's because, uh, as as my uh, partner and head of sales, Ertis used to say, <laughs> he used to blame Simon everything. Mm -hmm. He said he had to sell the goods over and over because we already sh was was shipping late, and people canceled their orders and he had to resell somebody else. Oh, and, oh damn! So. Okay, uh, Maurice Malone is here. Uh, we'll take qu a couple of quick questions, um, but first, man, since we got you here, you know, you got Williamsburg Garment Company as your new venture. Started with fifteen hundred dollars, have to be. Um, and the advice that he's given a lot of entrepreneurs, young people trying to get in the game, he's taking his own advice, and it's been growing ever since, right? And mm -hmm. and if people want to find out more about this brand, how can they go check out? Where where can they go? Uh, the website you can it's easy to remember uh, WingsburgGarment dot com or MadeInUSAJeans dot US. That's Wingsburg Garment Company. We also just opened a store in Williamsburg uh, last week, last mm -hmm. Tuesday. Congratulations. So, You're going to have MC battles and stuff? Different no, now. No, no. <laughs> no, no. You don't want to do it now, dog. No, we're trying to, we're trying to keep your trying store. To take over. We're trying to compete with Levi. So. <laughs> okay. So, you could, yeah, you don't want to bring them rappers in there yet. <laughs> <laughs> don't, do it. don't do it yet. <laughs> you know, uh, so Williamsburg Garment Company. Also, uh, MauriceMaloneUSA.com and uh, TheHipHopShop.com. You can find out. All three product lines. Okay, we come up with this game since we got you, and it's called Battle of the Best. Okay, you're rich, you're famous, and you're probably pretty good at what you do. I'm going to show you how great I am. But we want to know who you would pick between the greatest matchups of all oh. time. It's the Battle of the Best on Sway in the Morning. That boy's good.
All right, we got Maurice Malone here um, of the Williamsburg Garment Company and Maurice Malone in the hiphopshot.com. Um, here it is. So you got to pick out two names mm-hmm. and then DB. That's right. I picked out some uh, popular fashion brands, okay. and uh, you got to pick two at a time and say which one you think is the better. Let's see. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Before you back out of it, go ahead and give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> the first Echo one. Unlimited. Echo Unlimited or Fat Farm. That's uh, that's the easy one. I, uh, I was just over at Complex, and I ran into Mark, mm-hmm. and he has a beautiful thing going on, and it's way, way more than it, it started with Echo, so. I would say, I would have to say Echo. Echo. Right. Mark Echo. All right. He was here before. Yeah, Mark Echo had his Wrote book out. Yeah, he's yeah. like Mark Echo, man. Smart uh, man. Yeah. Smart guy. I carry actually both brands at the, in the hip-hop shop way oh. before they got big, too. Okay. Fat Farm yeah. and Mark Echo. All right. Cross Colors. Dig deep, dig deep. And I have to say... Uh, Russell, I love Russell. Yeah. I, I learned a lot from him. Yeah. I learned... Uh, one key thing he said, I remember things like that people say, like, hi, he he's not the smartest person uh, at his company, so he hired, but he hires people that smarter than him at every position. So I, I thought that's you know, oh, like mm, a good thing. Yeah, I gotta start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Fubu and cross colors. Hmm. 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 All right, so what what am I what am I saying about these? <laughs> Battle of the best. <laughs> if you have to pick Battle one. Best. Battle of the best. Um They're both hmm, neither are my style, but they both are uh, uh, they're equally important in the history of uh fashion. Uh Cross Colors was the first brand to do 100 million and to Proved that we had a market that uh, retailers had to pay attention to, and Fubu was the first, probably, to to break into the department store business and do it big. Mm-hmm. So uh, they both, you know, hit two major milestones that that was good for for uh, the genre of fashion. So you want to give them a tie? Yeah, I'm, I'm going okay. I'll be the first fair. time. Yeah, that's fair. And after you gave that history, man, yeah, I was, yeah. Yes. <laughs> that. So one more, one more. Go ahead, Mo. One more, one more. Damn. Yeah, I know. Cross colors at 100? First. Back then, though. That's wild. Yeah. Carl Kanai. Mm-mm. That'll be a good one. Mecca USA. Ooh. Mecca. Damn, I used to love it. Well, that. this is an easy one. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> Carl Kanai. Mm-hmm. Carl Kanai. Yeah. All right, cool. No All right. explanation. All right. All right, no explanation. Well, Carl Kanai is still in business. Okay, yeah, still going. He's uh, he's uh, re- relaunched Carl Kanai. Uh, he's one of the designers that owned his own that that keep uh, kept control of his name and his business. Uh, Mecca has been bought and sold a couple times. So, mm-hmm. okay, cool. we got real quick. Malachi is on the line from Detroit. Malachi, you there? Hello. Yeah. What up, though? What's up? You used to be at the hip hop shop back in the day. Man, let me tell you this, man. Uh, 1515 Broadway, 1315, uh, the Rhythm Kitchen. Yeah, I was there. Wow, and uh, right. to, the, to this day, still a, uh, still a uh, <clears throat> inspiration. I run uh, Detroit Deadstock Vintage Sportswear. We got Maurice Malone Vintage Gear on the racks. I hit him up all the time, you know, showing him what, what we picked up, old warehouses, whatnot. Um, yeah, rest in peace, Big Proof. Rest in, proof, rest in peace, Titus. By 10. But yeah, just bringing together uh, everybody in Detroit, it was like there was tons of street shit as far as the music. But when everybody came together and met for the first time at the kitchen, um, which was uh, kind of the predecessor to the hip hop shop, um, it was just like the Mecca Man where all the hip hop heads came out. Man, thanks for sharing that, Malachi. That's what's up, man. Yeah. Wow, you impacted a lot of folks' lives and continue to do so. Maurice Malone. I'm going to remake that chain overall, chain length overall. So you got one. I need a sample. Okay, that's what's up, man. <laughs> How can people reach you? Are you on social media? Yeah, uh, at Maurice Malone. Uh, I, I think uh, on Twitter you got to put an under slash between the name. Somebody stole my name. You, you go oh, to Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Ma- Maurice underscore Malone on Twitter. And at Maurice Malone. Instagram uh, and Twitter, uh, Williamsburg Garment. 
All right, Williamsburg Garment. Hit them up well, directly, man. You got questions? Um, hit them up directly or answer them. Mo, thanks for coming through, bro. No Thank doubt. you. That was all right, dope. absolutely, man. We've been doing each other for years, man. Mm-hmm. I dope. used to get all the free goods. Uh, yeah. I mean, I used to wear your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no. <I'm just> <laughs> <laughs> all right, up next, our intern Jones. Well, she got our new segment. It's called the Jones Zone. Sway in the morning. It's Sway in the morning only on Shade Forty Five.